One thing that Scotland can pride itself on is its abundance of graveyards or cemeteries, and in Edinburgh we have one of the oldest at Greyfriars Kirk in the Old Town. When the land here reverted to the Crown in 1560, because the burial ground at St Giles was at maximum capacity, Mary Queen of Scots granted the land for burial purposes in 1562. By 1620 the church had been built and the first burials had taken place. Many of the great and good have been buried here as can be seen on this board. The interior of the kirk is quite magnificent, dominated at one end by these huge organ pipes. There is also a small exhibition which is worth visiting to learn more about the kirk and the period of the Covenanters. There are volunteer guides inside who can answer any questions that you may have. The graveyard is a fascinating place to walk around with its numerous monuments, gravestones and plaques. Greyfriars is one of the most densely populated graveyards in Scotland and the monuments on display are only a fraction of the people buried there. You can imagine, Greyfriars is like a lasagna with layer upon layer of bodies buried there. By the late 1700s and the early 1800s, there was an increasing problem of recently buried bodies being dug up by the body snatchers or resurrectionists. These fresh bodies were then supplied to the medical college for good money with no questions asked. It's no surprise that it was a growing problem. Families who had just buried their recently deceased had to resort to constructing a mort safe like the one in this picture to protect the body or alternatively stand guard over the grave for several days until the body started to decompose. This gateway here leads to a part of the graveyard that was used to imprison the Covenanters. These were Presbyterians who had signed the Covenant supporting their king but not his religious beliefs. This came to a head in 1679 after the Battle of Bothwell Bridge, when over a thousand men were rounded up by Sir George Mackenzie, otherwise known as Bloody Mackenzie because of his brutal treatment. Ironically, his mausoleum is only yards from this prison area and is said to be haunted. But although time has caused many of the monuments and headstones to start to erode, and it is still easy to see the workmanship that was involved in creating their elaborate details. This one, for example, shows clearly the King of Terror is represented by the skeleton welding a scythe. In this one we can see a cross scythe and arrow representing implements of death. Below that, cross bones. Here is another representation with a coffin and cross spade and pickaxe. This one is very common and has nothing to do with a pirate but is in fact a death's head to represent death. And in case you were in any doubt, the inscription reads Memento Mori, which translates as remember that you must die. This one is definitely one of the more spooky in the graveyard and is of John Bain of Piccarly, buried sometime in the late 1500s. However, he's lost part of his nose and his feet and could do with some cosmetic surgery. However, a further 39 people are shown as having been buried on this spot, so it definitely became a bit crowded there. In this image we see the usual crossed coffins, death's head and crossed bones. But in the top left is an hourglass to show that the sands of time catch up with us all. In addition there is a hand ringing a bell, normally the bellman would ring the death bell at the head of the funeral procession. In this one we have Father Time laying on his side resting on an hourglass holding his scythe but in the middle is a rather grotesque cherub or an angel with an armoured breastplate and their foot on the King of Terrors, ensuring the deceased's passage into heaven. And to finish off on a more light-hearted note, it would be remiss of me not to mention a couple of the headstones that have Harry Potter connections. This one remembers one of Scotland's most shockingly awful poets, but whose surname came to be Professor McGonagall, and this Tom Riddle was adapted to become Tom Riddle, Lord Voldemort. Probably the most famous of all the inhabitants here is in fact not a person, but a dog. Everyone has heard of Greyfriars Bobby, who has been immortalised both with a headstone inside the graveyard and this wonderful statue out on the main street. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like and share, and if you want to see more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at Edinburgh Cab Tours. Thanks for watching.